Hello friends, and greetings to all you poor running souls. My name is Ed Blister Bud. Halloween is nearly upon us, and as such, today we delve into the shocking shoes, the rat races, and those monstrous marathons. We will stare into the abyss that is the runner's nightmares. Thank you for joining me today here at Bud Running Shoe Reviews. It's always appreciated. If you have not done so already, please hit that subscribe button. And also click the bell below for notifications of when I roll out those new videos for you. And it helps the channel out a huge amount to raise it from the dead. If you give this video a thumbs up like, but also share it with your running buddies. Thank you soon. Nightmare number one. <laughs> First, picture this, friends. You arrive with time to spare at your big race you've been training for for months and months. Every single preparation has been attended to with pinpoint accuracy. A PB? It's on the cards. The tarot cards, that is. You've got bags of time, so you queue up at the centipede-like line for the toilets. Lots of other runners there waiting to complete their preparations. Minutes pass. The light at the end of the tunnel never gets closer. The start time of the race suddenly seems like only seconds away. I think all of us have been in this situation once or twice, haven't we guys? And it's certainly one of my running nightmares. There just never seems to be enough porta toilets for all of the runners at these big events. No matter how many they've got, there's never enough. These type of scary, anxiety-inducing situations are only made worse when it's a marathon that you're taking on. You don't want to be caught short if it's a 26.2 mile fun fest. And with increasing levels of worry, anxiety and fear, it only makes this potty predicament or toilet terror even worse. So toilet torments of two fewer porta potties are my first running nightmare. Nightmare number two. <laughs> This is one that's really bugging me right now, guys. Overpriced, impossible to find super shoes. I think they're on everybody's Halloween list. The black cat, though, particularly stalks our souls, both night and day. Why is it that Puma just can't produce more of their top-end race shoe? Everybody wants it right now, the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite. I've got to admit, it's amongst the best that I've worn all year. If my shoulder wasn't fractured right now, I wouldn't be recording this video, I'd be out running in it. That's how much I like it. In fact, I might even put them on in a moment just so I can experience the feel underfoot. These beastly beauties wipe away foot fatigue and lighten the load with that nitro midsole material. I believe it's a nitrogen infused p backs and it really does rock my world. A price lower than the entry to heaven itself, it will elevate you up from hell to a land of a thousand PBs. But many runners out there are denied a pair due to scarce supply. Some people are haunted at the moment by that never-ending Groundhog Day of denial. Checking the Puma website, not to mention pretty much every other shoe retailer this side of Saturn. It's odd that the Puma organization, especially considering their jumping cat logo, haven't leapt at the opportunity to take a bite out of their competitors, Nike and mainly Adidas market share by ramping up production on these beastly bangers. Who knows why? Some mysteries are never meant to be solved. Why make such a stupendous race and tempo shoe and then not give it out to the world? Just seems bizarre to me. Leaving us starved like zombies for our next super shoe meal. So the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite scarce availability is nightmare number two. Nightmare number three. From devilishly desirable shoes to a pair straight from Hades. The Zoom Fly 4 was released recently by Nike and it's a shocker of a shoe. A midsole that has the comfort of a coffin underfoot with a upper which is about as furthest from a mummy's bandages as you can possibly get. Vast amounts of material there that just simply isn't needed. A really terribly designed upper. No idea what they were getting at. There's a punishing medial midsole mass on the Zoom Fly 4 and it left my arches in agony. And it's the only running shoe that I've ever purchased and sent back to meet its maker. A travesty of a test and in all fairness was pretty much a repeat 
of 2019 Zoomfly 3. Just some different visuals there and aesthetic leanings. React fake flyknit, a carbon plate and eye just simply don't gel. That combination just doesn't seem to mix well and Nike is starting to lag behind the leading pack. They produce some fantastic race shoes, but when it comes to training shoes, they're trash. Pretty much all of them. Not all of them. I like the Vomero 16 and I like the Pegasus 38, but some of the other stuff is just rubbish. That's just my honest opinion, but I'm a man wearing a ridiculous hat and sunglasses indoors. I think it's survival of the fittest in terms of running shoes in 2021. And I think if the swoosh brand refuse to keep up with the times, then the horde will catch up with them and take a bite out of their market share. I think that some other brands have actually taken a good chunk of that already. Nike kind of acting a bit like a zombie, aimless ambling around. A real horror show of a shoe, this one, the Zoomfly 4. That's nightmare number three. Nightmare number four. Last one in my list today, guys. The last nightmare for seasoned runners are the wild beasts on the invisible leashes. As you guys will know, I got appended by a retractable dog lead a couple of weeks ago. No running for me since then. It's horrible. It's a horror every day, mentally, physically. I'm stuck in a bit of a loop of despair. I'm stuck in a bit of a loop of despair, despair, despair. You guys will know what this is like if you've been injured, waiting to run again, but it's going to be a few weeks yet before the shoulders healed up and then some tasty physio after that. It's not the chain like dog leads I have in my nightmares here. And it's not even dented my view of those lovable hounds and mongrels. But I think that it's the fear of injury itself again. And in fairness, I didn't even know I was going to hit the floor until it happened. None of us want to get injured and have it stop us from enjoying our runs. And I think it's doubly as bad when it's not through any fault of your own as well. It's not through overuse or anything like that. I had a 150 day run streak at one point this year. I was feeling great. I was probably top form I've ever been. Really enjoying my runs. And it's taken away. As such, it's a battle of the mind to try and forgive and forget but that's not so easy when you're unable to even put your trousers on properly by yourself and it's gonna have to be baby steps as we go forward over the next few weeks doctor's orders and i'm not talking about dr frankenstein either i'm talking the oval district hospital so do keep an eye out for those retractable dog leads everybody i want you to be safe out there and if all else fails just stop the watch and turn back in the other direction Wish I'd done that now. Seems to always work in horror movies as well, right? You know, rather than heading towards the danger, just go back the other way and it'll be fine. Just go home. What are your running nightmares, guys? I'd love to hear what the viewers have to say. Let me know in the comments down below. I'll return next year with some more running nightmares. A monstrous musical interlude for you. As Halloween comes around, I think it's always a good idea to dust off the Ghostbusters films. And I particularly enjoy Ray Parker Jr.'s theme tune from the original film. I think that film's grossed like close to $300 million. It's incredible, really. Relatively low budget as well for when it was made. Absolutely infectious track in all the right ways. I think it was number one in quite a few countries back in 1984. I was pretty small. I think I was only about five then. And I can remember that track being everywhere. Some absolutely fantastic synthesizer sounds on that tune gives it a really funky kind of style nice precise production and of course ridiculously catchy once you've heard it once it's caught you like a ghost in a trap i think there were quite a few lawsuits surrounding the ghostbusters theme tune as well maybe the bass line i think it was similar to another tune that had been released but it's certainly a memorable one from ray parker jr go and check it out guys quite excited about the new film as well i think that's out here in the uk very soon so will be one i want to go and check out thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video guys it's always appreciated if you haven't done so yet please hit that subscribe button but also click the bell below for notifications when i roll those new videos out for you and it helps us out here at edbud running shoe reviews give this video a thumbs up like but also share it with your running buddies my name's edbud and i'll be seeing you